A thousand times I have heard that children shouldn't work because they are little guys. A thousand times I have heard that working children is the worst aspect that a country could have. A thousand times, and perhaps I can say million, I have been the witness of the repercussion of police forces towards children when they are working on the street. My father didn't like to study that much. He didn't like mathematics, as most of us that not hear, right? So, so he decided to leave the school when he was 10 years. Yeah, he was so young. And he started working, making bread, selling chocolates on the street as well. My mother, on the other hand, she couldn't continue her studies because of some economic problems. Because my godfather, he didn't study university, neither my godmother. So, right now, my parents, they don't have a, a job. They, for example, my mother, she's a housewife, and my father, he continues selling chocolates in the street. However, I didn't see the money or the lack of money as a limit to stop dreaming. I haven't seen money as a, okay, as, as a way to feel depressed or as a way to feel very sad. Rather, I see that as a strength, as a good opportunity to start assuming new responsibilities. So I realized, Junior, you are eight years old. Why you cannot contribute to your family from your skills? So I decided to start working when I was eight years old. Yes, I was too young. And then, I'm sorry, and then, uh, of course, most of my family will disagree, but still, I didn't take care of it. I started working selling chocolates, as my father did, uh, actually that, <coughs> and also selling cigarettes. <laughs> yes, cigarettes. I can't do that here, because otherwise I'm going to be expelled. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's cool because it was an illegal, illegal act, because no one is going to allow you to sell cigarettes in a society. It's like to promote people to smoke and then to get cancer. But it was illegal, not because of the cigarettes, it was because of my age. Because now, right now in Peru, there is not a law that support or protect children, working children, and therefore, in case of the death or in case of someone is gonna kill someone because they are working, they will not get the support from the government. The, the government. So I started doing that because I realized that in this society, there are, for example, in Peru, there are more than three million of working children right now. And perhaps you may be wondering why does it happen, right? So it's very, I, I would like to, to share two pictures and then try, I would like to make you all to, to reflect on what is the main idea or what is the first idea that is coming up to your mind when you see that picture. Okay, perhaps you are saying, poor child, he shouldn't do that, he has to be in the school, or maybe, where are their parents? Where are his parents? I thought that when I, I saw that picture for the first time. Now I would like to share the, the other picture. Yeah, okay. You all probably know who is he, right? Mm -hmm. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> but his name is Daniel. Daniel. I don't remember the surname, but yeah. So, what is the purpose of it? I showed that picture before because that child was working as Daniel was doing as well in Harry Potter movies, right? Because he was a child, he, he just maybe, he decided to start acting, oh, okay, I wanna be famous, or my parents, they gave me the permission to, to, to film. So what I'm trying to, to tell you guys is those children, because he was a child when he started filming the movies, those child, they, they have been working as well. They both, they were doing the same thing. So 
why when we heard the, the phrase or the, the, the word children, labor, or perhaps working children, we immediately create on our minds that this is something that don't have to exist, right? You cannot say, oh, I never think about that. You can never say, oh, uh, oh Junior, oh, I, I always think that children should, should work because they, they have the right to do it. That's a lie. Because even in my, from my own experience, from the government, I had the opportunity to have several meetings with them, and they have told me, why you are not in the school? Why you are not with your teachers and your fellow students? So, you know, the time goes so quickly, and I couldn't continue working with my father, because we, I had to wake up so early at 4 a.m. to go to the fish market and, and work for 30 minutes to get into it, and start selling my stuff. I couldn't continue it because my uncle, he, offers, he offered me to, to go to another city and start working, making bread. So, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but I broke two plates, but someone taught one. <laughs> so, every single, uh, when I saw, when I see a bread, it brings me, me memories. Because in one, week, in one week, I had to learn how to make bread, and of course, as part of my experience, I burned almost 20 breads in one night. <laughs> so my uncle got upset, but then we just finished laughing. So it's not easy what working children do. It's not easy at all. And from my own experience, I can say, sometimes you feel embarrassing to do it, doing it. You feel, oh, my, my friends, they are gonna feel embarrassing of me, or I'm gonna feel discriminated from others because I'm a, work, I'm, I'm a, I'm a working child. Basically, when I turned 11, I knew about an organization led by children in Peru. It was a national organization. And it was interesting for me to know more about my rights because I didn't imagine how important it was to start working at the age they have mentioned before. I always hear, oh, Junior, what are you doing with your life? Or, 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 or what, what, when you have the time to relax your mind? Because you probably may wonder, if Junior started working at eight years old, but did he continue his studies? Or he decided to leave the school as his father did? I didn't. Actually, I was studying and working at the same time. It could be maybe quite interesting to analyze or perhaps to, to know because Sometimes it's impossible to, to know people who do both of, kind of go to the school and work at the same time. Because sometimes we think that we cannot do that, basically, we cannot do that. So in the morning, as I said before, I was working and in the afternoon I was uh, studying at, at night. I couldn't see TV because I don't have a TV in my house. And I think it's good because you have the opportunity to talk to your parents until you fall asleep. Uh, and also, I was helping to my mom. In, I mean, my, my little sister, she just was born, and then I had to help my mom to, to take care of her. So, I think that I started organizing myself in an organization because I thought it was important and I think it helped me, it helped me to, to make me the person that I am now. I consider myself as a fighter of the children's rights, but especially of the working children. Because I believe that they don't have to be excluded as many of us perhaps once in our life did. I want you to all reflect that working children is not a problem. It could be a good way to improve your life in a better way. I want you all to reflect or realize maybe that 
working children, they have a history, a story behind. They have a background. And therefore, we don't have to judge them. We don't should judge them because they are working. Because they are working children. And I just would like to tell you that we have to recognize them as a citizens. I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm not here to talk about my story. And also, when I, I really want to make you distinguish between exploitation and dignified work. Because sometimes when we hear that children labor, we will immediately create, okay, this is worse, this is bad. We have to eradicate exploitation, I agree. But we shouldn't eradicate working children. Because they do that because they need to do it. They need to do that. Because they want to contribute to th their families. Because they want to be the change that really, we really want to see. So after organizing myself in that organization, I decided to apply to UWC. So it was interesting because no one before in, the, in UWC Peru history, uh, the, the uh, uh, working child applied to the UWC movement. So it was hard, it was easy at all, especially because in Peru the process of selection is very hard. And to be honest, I subestimate my, myself once because when I were, I was to, I went to the place where in which the, the, the exam is going to take place. Um, there were so many students from private schools, from top schools, and I say, oh, perhaps I, I have the less chances to get into that. And it's part of my experience because sometimes you feel, you, you probably are gonna feel the same. Uh, but I was wrong because right now I'm here in front of you and continue working with organizations uh, and continue working for the fighting for the children's rights. Perhaps you didn't know that. But after one year, one year and a half here, I have realized that there are so many ways to express yourself. Some working children, they cannot express themselves because they, they not because they are antisocial, because as so many people could think, they don't express yourself by using this, the power of speaking because they use the silence, they use the writing way. And I chosen the writing way because I think you don't have to just talk and talk and talk every single time. You can just be a little bit, maybe, okay, keep the silence, keep the silence and just hear what people think or what people talk about. And I chosen writing because I think it's important. I think every single person in this world have the right to educate themselves. No throw, go to the school, no throw to have a teacher every single day and listen to classes and perhaps taking, taking exams every single week. I think through literature, they can educate themselves. And that's why a working child, I consider my, myself as a working child, have written something about himself, but also not because he wants to share his story, but because he wants to make you all think about and analyze and especially to understand this social phenomenon in a better way. So, guys, I'm here to tell you, please, don't just, don't judge working children. Don't say that children labor is the worst aspect of a society could have, because they don't. They do that because they wanna develop as people, they want to change their life. I'm still in poverty, I'm still, I don't want to be famous and I want to be rich, but I want something important. Recognize every single child in this world as citizen. Because no matter the age, no matter if, whether it's a child labor or, or not, what is matters is we are all human beings and working children, they are human beings and they have the right to be recognize and they have, they, have, they have the right to be considered as part of this society.